Okay, so we are going to solve this problem 3.13 from Grift's third edition. But before we solve this problem, let's just review quickly what we already saw uh, since chapter one. In chapter one, we were using wave functions, which were functions of position. And so we were working in the position representation. And there we found that the expectation value of position was obtained through this integral. And so this is the conjugate of the function. Then we get uh, the, the operator, in this case, position. And then comes the wave function again. So this sandwich, and we had to solve this integral in x. For example, from minus infinity to infinity, but that would depend on the problem. Okay, how about the expectation value of momentum? Well, then things started becoming a little bit more complicated. Now, remember, we saw, we found that to obtain the expectation value of momentum, we still had that sandwich, but now the momentum operator was this derivative. And we show that. Okay. Now, what we want to do, we want to go work in another representation. We want to work with functions, uh, wave functions that are functions of now momentum. Okay, so you see their momentum. Well, things now get swapped. Right? Uh, the expectation value for momentum here is the simplest one in the sense that we just put P here. And careful. The integral now is in momentum, of course, because we are playing with momentum representation. Now, if I now want to compute the expectation value of position, well, this is the one that will become a little bit different, a little bit more complicated in the sense that here, what well, we are going to put the derivative, the derivative in momentum. How? Like this, minus h bar over i, partial derivative of momentum, acting on this function that I'm writing now. And so this operator acts on the function on its on, on its right. This is what we want to show. Okay, so the question of the problem is, show that this is the case, that if you want to compute the expectation value position in momentum representation, you will be dealing with this uh, operator here. Okay, so you see that there is a derivative here. So we'll have to work to um, make this derivative appear in our procedure, okay? Very well, so we, how we are going to start? We are going to start from what we already knew. We are going to start from this. And we are going to um, evolve to reach that other point, okay? So here we are in position representation. We'll have to change to get the expectation value by using momentum representation. Very well, so let's start from this equation which we already knew. So let me just repeat it here, write it again. Integral in x, Conjugate of the wave function in x, operator, wave function, okay? All right, what do we know? What do, did we learn? Well, we know that we can go from position to moment or from moment to position, play with Fourier transform. And we know that the wave function in position is the inverse Fourier no, is the inverse Fourier transform of the wave function in momentum. So I'm going to write this here. Inverse Fourier transform is just this integral that I'm writing here. And here comes the function in momentum. So this is what I'm going to substitute there. Okay, And I'm going to do the same procedure on this side. I'm also going to substitute this uh, wave function in position to something in momentum. Now, so here on this side, this is the conjugate. So what we are going to put here, 
1 over 2 pi over h bar. Now the integral, since here we are already using p, well, let me give a different name to this variable on this um, left side. I'll call it p prime. Okay, and since this is conjugate careful here, we need to remember to put this minus i. Hmm? Minus i p prime x over h bar, and then the function also conjugate. Okay, so let's substitute that. We'll now have three integrals to play with. Correct, so let's just go on and write all this. So that expectation value, well, let's rewrite again. That expectation value for position now involves three integrals, right? We have the integral in x, the integral in d prime, the integral in p. We have these constants, these ones and these ones. So let me just put the two together. We get 2 pi h bar, right? And then let's put the rest. We have exponential of minus i p prime x over h bar. We have the function in p prime. We have x. We have exponential of i p x over h bar. And we have the function in p. All right. Okay. So you see that we just rewrote. Then yeah. what we know, how to write the wave function in position in terms of momentum very well. Everything's correct here, but I don't see any derivative showing up. Remember what we want to show. Here it is. We want to show that the expectation value of um, position involves this derivative. So I have to find a way to come up with this derivative. And so we look at this equation a little bit, and then you focus on this part. See, we can rewrite this as a derivative. How? What is the derivative of an exponential of i pi x over h bar? Derivative in momentum, the DDP. Well, Derivative of the exponential gives us back the exponential with this part that comes down. So you see that this is very similar to what we had up there. The only thing that is on our way is this h bar over i, but I got rid of it right now. Okay, so I'm going to substitute this part here, oops, let me, so I'm going to substitute this part here, this x exponential with this derivative. So this is very good. I see now at least a derivative showing up, um, but it's still not really what we want. Now we want the derivative to be acting on the function. Okay, well, let's be patient and work on this a little bit more. So let me rewrite everything. We have 1 over 2 pi h bar integral in x, um, integral in dp prime and dp. And then exponential function. Now we got this h bar over i, derivative of this exponential in p and the function in p. Well, how can we make this derivative go act on that function? We can play with integration by parts, can't we? So let me isolate from this whole long um, equation and with three integrals, let me isolate just the one that, uh, that I'm, I'm mentioning here, just this part. Okay, so what I'm saying is, how can we invert the order here? How can we have this derivative acting not on the exponential, but 
on that function if we do integration by parts, correct? What is the integration by parts of this integral? It's going to be that function huh? and this function along the, the, the range of the integral from minus infinity to infinity. So I'm going to put here from minus infinity to infinity with a minus sign now, and we have the exponential, this function, and now the derivative going finally where we want it. And you see that I'm putting partial now because this function depends on, oops, this function depends on P, momentum, and time. No, so became a partial derivative. Okay. Um, this term here goes to zero. Remember, we are interested in those square integrable functions, not those functions that can be normalized. So at infinity, they go to zero. So this part is gone, and we got a very nice piece exactly with what we wanted. So let's go back to that... Um, long equation with three integrals, and we are going to substitute this part with what we obtained here. Don't forget that there is a minus sign. Okay, so let's go. We then have that this is going to be 1 over 2 pi h bar. No? Then we have the integral in x, the integral in p prime, the integral in p, everything is still there. That function, exponential minus i p prime x over h bar, this function, which is the conjugate, p prime and t, and now comes, we have, Good. We have this h bar over i, and we have here minus sign. All that with this derivative. Okay, so I'm going to write this. Well, first I have to remember to put this part, so let me write this part first. And now everything that is in blue there, I'm going to even put in blue here, is minus so that minus sign there is the h bar over i so i'm copying it here and this partial um, derivative in momentum so this looks very good this is the part that we really wanted okay but if we still have three integrals in this story hmm, how are we going to play with that how are we going to solve them remember the what we want to do involves just one, and we have here just one integral, and down here we have three. So what are we going to do now? Well, something that we know, that we learned, that we discussed is the following. Let me circumvent some important terms to see if you recognize. This constant, this integral in x, this guy, and this guy. Okay, so what I circumvented in red, I'm going to rewrite here. I'm going to rewrite it in red. So minus i p prime minus p x over h bar. What is this? We learned, we discussed, we said that this by definition is the delta function, the direct delta function p prime minus p. Okay, so Coming back to the expectation value there, we have, I got, I'm going to get rid of that integral in x because I'm just going to put this. And we have integral in p prime. We have integral in p <clears throat> function in p prime. You see that the exponential disappeared. And here we have minus h bar over i and this derivative. What else? The delta function. Okay, so 
what did we learn? Whenever we have a delta function, and involving this integral, this point A, for example, from, from minus infinity to infinity, this gives us F A. Okay, so in this whole integrals that we have there, the integral in P prime, because I have this delta function, I can solve this integral by substituting that P prime by P. Okay, so long story short, we reached what we want. Not so the integral in P prime disappears because of the delta function. And now we have just the integral in P and the sandwich that we wanted. The function now in P, now so remember here it was P prime, now it became P because I solved the integral with the delta function. Here we have this operator position but in momentum representation. And now we are done. We showed what we wanted to do. Uh, so that's the end.